to have people who are surprised and disbelieving that I'm a professional hula hooper and that I make all my money that way. But it is kind of like saying, yeah, I'm a professional jump roper. Like, there's just no context for it. Just pushing the boundaries of what people have just become accustomed to accepting as a, a viable occupation. I'm happy to inspire as many people as possible. have that same sort of hip, edgy, fitness vibe. In the same way that yoga, you, know, you walk onto the Muni and you'll see people with all their yoga socks, you know. Okay, so break, which means um, stopping the hoop with one hand. A lot of people think, oh, hula hoop's a thing of the past, right? I used to do that when I was little and skinny, but the hoops that we use aren't little tiny children's hoops. And so because they're heavier and they have these adhesive tapes on them, they literally stick to your hips. I have a really hard time like getting to the gym or doing anything like that on a regular basis. So this is like a really good way of sort of tricking myself um, into doing it. We're gonna reach a tipping point that really exposes more and more people to this as an exercise, which I think is what really can reach a lot more people because people in this country especially are looking for a great way to work out that's not tedious, and this is really it. Things are great financially. I'm at a level where I can hire an entire staff of teachers, where I can pay an entire staff of performers, where I actually have the capital to invest into manufacturing a hoop. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. I met with Eric today, who is working with Precision Plastics. He's going to present me with a bid to create my manufactured collapsible hula hoop. We can come up with a rubberized paint that will actually adhere to the plastic. Wow. Um, that would be cool. And the third aspect of the company has been creating the instructional DVD. We have over 20 different costumes that we use in Maui, you know, while we teach hula hooping. So it's kind of like, what? It's you're, you're in a costume thigh high in a lagoon teaching me how to hula hoop, you know? It suddenly makes it interesting. My business strategy is to make the hoop as hip and hot as possible. Um, and I try to do that by doing some pretty extravagant performances with elaborate costumes in very intense performance environments. We're at the largest nightclub in San Francisco called Ruby Sky. You know, it's not at being on my computer, answering phones, sending faxes, managing my staff. I mean, I, that's necessary work that needs to get done to grow the project. But this is, this is the essence of it. Let's go. Club environment is an entirely different domain for hula hooping. It's an opportunity to really push the acrobatic aspects of it and the sensual aspects of it and the theatrical aspects to a really far extreme. The DJs are often playing music which is really intense, it's really fast, it's a high beat per minute count. I believe that when you start hooping at the same rate and the DJ is playing at the same rate and meanwhile the people are dancing down there at the same rate and watching you, it creates this resonance. And you can tell looking down at the audience and they're just wide-eyed and they're looking and they're reaching up to touch you and you know, it's, I just feel like it creates the living art. You know, all three are throbbing at once. It's like happening, you know? But, yeah. 
great experience. Um, a lot of presence in the crowd tonight. And the reason I run the business is to share that flooding with passion, that hoopgasm, with as many other people who want to experience it as possible. My biggest inquiry now is how can you take the energy of hoop dance and carry it with you even when you're not hooping? You know, it's very easy to get into a deep meditative state while you're hooping in your, in your living room, but can you take that feeling into rush hour traffic?